None of the images you see here are real. Every single one of these videos was created by AI with a simple one sentence prompt. You can ask it to create humans, cities, animals, landscapes, faraway planets. You can say what city it's taking place, what clothes the characters are wearing, describe how much dust the car is kicking up as it's driving on the road, or pretty much anything else that you can think of. And the model will quickly, accurately, and realistically render that video. The people who are behind this model, well, it's OpenAI. Sam Altman and team, the same people behind ChatGPT, Dolly 3, and all the other big AI advancements making headlines pretty much around the world. And this is their latest and greatest. Sora, creating video from text. Sora is an AI model that can create realistic and imaginative scenes from simple text instructions. All the videos that you see here are generated by Sora without any modifications. As you'll see at the end of this video, these aren't cherry picked. When this was released, Sam Altman was live tweeting as he was generating whatever people asked for. They would tweet various things at him and he would instantly render them in Sora and post it on Twitter. It was done in real time and the results are stunning. I'll post those at the end of the video, but I think it's important to mark this point as the point at which we're transitioning from very easily recognizable AI video to, well, this. It's getting just a little bit harder. You might be able to spot some weirdness around the edges, maybe some shifting textures, but all in all, the video is getting better, more lifelike where it needs to be lifelike and more imaginative and graphical when you're looking for something more animation style. And the other big thing is it can generate longer videos, videos that are coherent, videos that seem like they've been taken by one drawn out shot in one location. According to OpenAI, they're saying, we're teaching AI to understand and simulate the physical world in motion with the goal of training models that help people solve problems that require real world interaction. Introducing Sora, our text to video model. Sora can generate videos up to a minute long while maintaining visual quality and adherence to the user's prompt. Today, Sora is becoming available to red teamers to assess critical areas for harms or risks. We are also granting access to a number of visual artists, designers, and filmmakers to gain feedback on how to advance the model to be the most helpful for creative professionals. We're sharing our research progress early to start working with and getting feedback from people outside of OpenAI and to give the public a sense of what AI capabilities are on the horizon. Sora is able to generate complex scenes with multiple characters, specific types of motion, and accurate details of the subject and background. The model understands not only what the user has asked for in the prompt, but also how those things exist in the physical world. The model has a deep understanding of language, enabling it to accurately interpret prompts and generate compelling characters that express vibrant emotions. Sora can help create multiple shots within a single generated video that accurately persist characters and visual style. This current model has weaknesses. It may struggle with accurately simulating the physics of a complex scene and may not understand specific instances of cause and effect. For example, a person might take a bite out of a cookie, but afterward, the cookie may not have a bite mark. The model may also confuse spatial details of a prompt, for example, mixing up left and right, and may struggle with precise descriptions of events that, that take place over time, like following a specific camera trajectory. Sora is a diffusion model, which generates video by starting off with one that looks like static noise and gradually transforms it by removing the noise over multiple steps. Sora is capable of generating entire videos all at once or extending generated videos to make them longer. By giving the model foresight of many frames at a time, we've solved the challenging problem of making sure a subject stays the same even if it goes out of view temporarily. Similar to GPT models, for example, GPT-4 from ChatGPT, Sora uses a transformer architecture, unlocking superior scaling performance. We represent videos and images as collections of smaller units of data called patches, each of which is akin to a token in the GPT architecture. 
by unifying how we represent data, we can train diffusion transformers on a wider range of visual data than was possible before, spanning different durations, resolutions, and aspect ratios. SOAR builds on past research in DALI and GPT models. It uses the recaptioning technique from DALI 3, which involves generating highly descriptive captions for the visual training data. As a result, the model is able to follow the user's text instructions in the generated video more faithfully. In addition to being able to generate a video solely from text instructions, the model is able to take an existing still image and generate a video from it, animating the image's contents with accuracy and attention to small detail. The model can also take an existing video and extend it or fill in the missing frames. Sora serves as a foundation for models that can understand and simulate the real world, a capability we believe will be an important milestone for achieving AGI, Artificial General Intelligence. And the technical paper for Sora is coming later today, so look out for that. We'll be doing a deep dive into how this thing works. On a more personal note, I gotta say I'm very excited about how this whole AI video is progressing for multiple different reasons. One of them is the power that's gonna put in artists' hands to create incredible worlds that we can all experience. Right now, the videos and the movies that are produced, they're really limited by the movie studios and the whole business model that goes into it. Committees of people decide on what kind of movies we should produce, then try to find somebody to produce that movie at a, an affordable budget. Maybe it's just me getting old, but I feel like a lot of the new stuff that's coming out of Hollywood is kinda crap. But now with something like this and something like Eleven Labs that can produce pretty much any voice that you can think of, it will become much easier to create incredible movies or animations, stuff that looks like Pixar or Disney or DreamWorks. With your own characters, your own worlds, you just do the thing that you're interested in doing. Are you a great voice actor? You can do all of the voices or have Eleven Labs do the voiceovers for you. Are you a great writer? Do the writing. If you need help brainstorming characters or ideas, ChatGPT can help you with that. And those things are getting pretty, pretty good. And the final piece to the puzzle was AI video. For a while, AI video always had problems. There wasn't consistency. A character as it walks down the street would morph several times into slightly different characters sometimes even wearing different clothes. Now it's becoming a lot more consistent, a lot more coherent. In one of the videos, a lady is walking down the street of Tokyo, and that whole shot is about a minute long. And as the camera kind of moves along with her, you see more and more of the city, but the background remains consistent. Or as they say in the AI research papers, it has temporal consistency. Basically meaning it makes sense over time. So I can't wait to see what people dream up with technology like this, but there's another side to AI video and various AI neural networks in general that's not discussed quite as much. And I believe Runway ML, another AI text-to-video company, is recruiting researchers for this specific role. But basically, as we do more and more research into AI, it seems like these neural networks are building these sorts of world models they seem to understand certain things that they're not really taught. We give them data, and later it seems like they grasp certain things that we haven't explicitly explained. And the better they understand something, the better they can reproduce it. So for example, when you see AI video with birds flying or bumping into each other, in order to truly understand how to render that happening, the neural network, we, we believe right now, develop some sort of a model about how physics works, about how flight works. Certainly they seem to develop some ideas about how light and camera angles work. In a paper we covered in this channel, a university took a basically a blank slate neural network. So it had the GPT architecture similar to a lot of the stuff that OpenAI is using, and they fed it tons and tons of 2D images. There wasn't any 3D data to go along with those 2D images. It was just pictures of people, of cats, of cars. And now when we look at those images, we can realize that they are, in fact, representations of something that is 3D. 
when you see a car, you can imagine that 3D car on the street. You can probably imagine what it would be like to go around it and see it from all angles, etc. But a, a computer, a neural network that has never witnessed that should not be able to know how to represent that car in 3D space. It should not even have any idea of what 3D space is. Again, it's only been fed 2D images. And yet what these researchers found out as they probed this model, and you can think of probing as almost pausing the model mid thought and then kind of slicing into it and then trying to figure out what happens in there like a detective. We don't have full visibility into what's going on within these neural networks, but like a detective, we can kind of look at the clues and see what's happening. What appears to happen is that the model slowly develops some representation of the 3D space. It starts understanding what's in the foreground of the image, what's in the background, how light falls through various objects in the scene. It starts understanding the, the focus of the image, sort of the salient object. So if you're taking a picture of a car on a lawn, it's not focusing on the little blades of grass. It knows the car is sort of the center of that image, the centerpiece, the thing that we're looking at. And again, this isn't done by, for example, a very smart computer scientist writing some code that allows it to do that. We just use the GPT structure and the transformers, which is how we build these neural nets. And then we just feed it tons and tons of data. And over time, these neural models start getting better and better at predicting outputs, whether that's image or text or video. And as these models get larger and we give it more data and we use more computational resources to train it, they seem to be getting better and better and better. As you're looking at these images, think about this. The outputs you're seeing, this isn't like a video game where somebody puts together every piece of code, every pixel, builds everything. None of this is coded. The humans don't really have any input over the pixels or where everything's located. They just put in the text. And then later they help train the model, telling it when it's doing well, when it's maybe not so much. That's reinforcement learning of human feedback. And over time, this neural network, this brain, basically, this digital brain that we've created, it figures out how to do the thing that we want it to do. The thing you're looking at was created by a digital brain that watched massive amounts of videos created by humans and over time figured out how to replicate some of that based on the inputs that we give it. And the way it did that is by creating a mental model of how the world works. And that's one area where I would love to see some more research done. And in case you were wondering, are these just cherry pick results? Is it gonna be possible for you to replicate this when uh, you get your hands on it? Sam Altman offered to create in real time as a tweet storm the various prompts that people throw on him, saying, don't hold back on the detail or difficulty. So you be the judge. Here's one. A wizard wearing a pointed hat and a blue robe with white stars casting a spell that shoots lightning from his hand and holding an old tome in his other hand. That looks pretty good. I mean, the hand gets a little weird at points, but the face is extremely realistic. It looks like he is a crazy old wizard. I, I, I would believe that. <laughs> And here is a half duck, half dragon flies through a beautiful sunset with a hamster dressed in adventure gear on its back. And here's a street level tour through a futuristic city, which in harmony with nature is also simultaneously cyberpunk. I mean, it's definitely looks like it's in harmony with nature. That's looking really good. And it is a street level tour. I mean, maybe some cyberpunk elements are missing, but I mean, it is sci-fi. It is... So he's saying the city should be clean with advanced futuristic trams, which is kind of like what we're looking at here. Beautiful fountains, which for sure, like these are little lakes and little water pieces around this thing. Giant holograms everywhere and robots all over. You know, I got us, I look at this reflection of these, this building of this bridge that's over the water. That is absolutely mind blowing. Oh, here, uh, Sam Altman decided to redo this one. So this is that half duck dragon with a hamster on its back. I mean, yeah, this is looking a lot better. I mean, this is a duck with horns like a dragon and these scaly green wings. And it's pretty good. Why it's flying backwards, I'm not too sure, but still. All right, how about a futuristic drone race at sunset on the planet Mars? That is pretty good. I mean, it nailed the redness of the Mars. It's definitely a drone race. 
It has multiple models that kind of veer off over there. I like it. Here's two golden retrievers podcasting on top of a mountains, uh, on top of a mountain. So yeah, the golden retrievers look super lifelike with their little headphones, rocking their bows, headphones or whatever that is. And yeah, I mean, they're certainly on a side of a mountain. Uh, I love it. Here's an instructional cooking lesson for homi noki hosted by grandmother, social media influencer, Sydney rustic Tuscan country with kitchen with, with cinematic lighting. I mean, that is, I mean, it, it looks like noki right here, but then it also kind of looks like mashed potatoes. I don't know, but I, I like it. A bicycle race on ocean with different animals as athletes riding the bicycles with drone camera view. I mean... Yes, these are penguins and sharks and dolphins riding bicycles. That's a hard, hard prompt. And here's the Bling Zoo. It's a single video generated by Sora. Shot changes and all. Why is it eating diamonds? Or, or emer emerald? I don't, I don't know what's happening here. Is it made out of diamonds? But yeah, I mean, this is a Bling Zoo. That's the one point I can't argue. Anyways, I'm blown away. I can't wait to try this thing. It's eating like this necklace these diamonds and it's like having a hard time with it. It's kind of gagging on it. This is out of this world. It's also kind of made out of diamonds. Oh, and an emerald. I was trying to say the word because this said emerling. And I know what it meant, but for some reason, because it's sped like this, I could not for the life of me remember the actual word. So it's emerald. So this is, this, this seems to me like an emerald turtle thing. Anyways, I can't wait to get my hands on this. I hope you enjoyed that. Hit like, subscribe. This this is heating up. This is getting better and better every single day. So stay tuned.